uh, is going to follow our second panel discussion. The elections are over. What is next? This is the second panel discussion and kind of video format dedicated to the open discussion of the local um, elections 2020. And the results uh, and the lessons for the unity and the stability of the country. And if you're talking about uh, we review that the uh, national platform uh, dialogue about peace and uh, safety and, uh, reintegration, they came up with the report of those regional consultations they had, the national unity under the conditions of the local uh, pre-election uh, race, how we can actually prevent confrontation. Now we are going to discuss the issue. The elections are over. What is next? Though we know that uh, in some in some cities and localities they are going to have the second uh, stage of the elections and we do not know what the Constitution Court will uh, rule regarding whether the elections are over or not over, whether they took place or did not take place, etc. Uh, there are, whether there are some districts or there are no districts, etc., etc. In any case, they conclude, they, let's say, uh, they, they did uh, pre conclusions uh, uh, that it was the case. So I would like to give the floor to Vladimir uh, Lupati. We are talking, uh, who is co coordinator of the working group. Dialogue about peace and safety discussions, what the conclusions could be made, and how the results of the election will influence the reintegration and reintegration unity and, uh, and let's say, the stability, and uh, the, the, what, what we can uh, regard as support base. As Alec said, what we can do regarding the national co cohesion. Etc. So the time limit for each is seven minutes plus one, let's say. So, well, then we have the floor. During the previous panels, you described a lot of trends we encountered during the pre election uh, campaign. So, we mostly, we are going to talk about possible directions, what we sh can do in the post election period in order to ensure national cohesion and social. Unity. So, some of the fixations I would like to offer your attention. Uh, we are talking about the local elections, but they, in fact, demonstrate the crisis of the representative model of democracies and the crisis of the morally outdated uh, system and the system of elections, which is not adequate. It was turned out uh, that, in addition to the traditional factors, which actually provoke some kind of the let's say, separation of the countries, like linguistic, uh, identity, etc. But uh, the, even the political system is turned out to be, generates the, the, uh, the, 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 the center, uh, uh, let's say, um, tendencies and create the uh, kind of the conditions which is written to national unity. There are a lot of factors, but what does it mean? In my opinion, we deal was a kind of the uh, flame of the uh, political pandemic, the results of the uh, elections, the three major items. Number one, dissemination of political anarchism. Why I emphasize that? Because we hear a lot today when the president accuses a mayor, the mayor that he's a separatist, or when we hear the uh, the saying that uh, we are, we are uh, we, they're going to disseminate latent uh, separatism, in this way we actually we uh, spread this kind of the uh, separation of the opinion because we do not have the really uh, well completed model uh, which is actual political archism with all its manifestations manifestations the second level regional uh, 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 scale when, when the, some of the um, uh, politicians gravitate towards the practice when they try to to take the responsibilities between the government and the local um, uh, authorities 
or the uh, attitude between the uh, national and the regional authorities so when they create a cr uh, try to create some regionalism forming a state within a state and creating some kind of confrontation model of the local the identity which actually con confronts to the national identity uh, confronts the national identity we know a lot of cases when the local politicians or political economic uh, economical groups try to provoke some kind of the enclaves and to go be, be, be beyond the boundaries of the national legal field etc but the uh, elections demonstrated that we still have this pandemic of the uh, hatred on intolerance to somebody else's opinion and they actually aggravated the uh, ukrainophobism um, which creates uh, which offers the threatens uh, threatens the, the, the sense of dignity and self-identity of uh, sensitivity which is actually further kindled by a demonstration of the absence of any uh, social responsibility and someone tries to increase their ratings based on this kind of separation of opinions and try to to, uh, to, to let's say to stage some kind of dog fights between the different politicians anyway we have to comprehend and talk about the crisis of model re of reintegration if we had some kind of really active model of reintegration maybe those threats could be clearly seen even before the elections maybe some uh, decisions could be passed but unfortunately we didn't have those decisions in place so today we do not say that the, uh, the, the about the failure of the not listen our party during the elections we are talking about the crisis of the model of reintegration also would like to focus on one more uh, one uh, important issue since the problem the hybrid uh, military aggression the part of the russia was focused uh, was aimed at to increase the crisis of the self-governance and to increase the chaos uh, in different uh, localities and to uh, impose kind of forced uh, federalization so the key topic uh, uh, safe of safe reintegration means to have a different look at the process of decentralization i agree with mr ilge who mentioned that this is one of the most successful reforms but reforms but this doesn't mean that we should not co co uh, correct the reforms and by the way this reform is hasn't been completed it's just passed halfway at least because this uh, reform of the uh, local self-governments makes provision for both local and regional self-governance um, reform and this reform hasn't been completed and from the point of view of the philosophy of the safe reintegration of the country we must talk about safe decentralization what does it mean safe decentralization first of all is decentralization which doesn't create risks for the national unity social cohesion and doesn't create the uh, the threats to, to the disintegration of the country in fact in order, in order to meet those requirements we have to revisit the political philosophy of decentralization and elections demonstrated that if you do not want to step on the same race again what is this key issue here? How to revisit what I mentioned before, to overcome the um, difficulties of processes of decentralization of one of the regulatory um, steps and the post-Soviet uh, model of uh, economic uh, control, uh, economic development and uh, actually uh, and uh, here we do not uh, we lag behind uh, what we had before uh, if we do not do something about that we are going to increase the gap uh, which actually threatens national uh, unity and the, uh, the stability of the country what does safe decentralization mean uh, we need to uh, to to, to um, to have some kind of uh, the same uh, ideological culture in other kind of uh, space without decentralization without uh, reintegration this is really a risk and we have to somehow to uh, to correct this negative risk 
and this must be what uh, in addition to uh, re uh, reintegration we have to take care of decentralization theft decentralization preservation of uh, complementary uh, nature synchronized nature between the uh, the central and local identity if uh, the local or regional uh, identity is antagonist to the national identity then we have a problem we have to do something about that at last uh, we should not so to say uh, we should not uh, turn self governance into the icon we do not we could talk different kinds of uh, self governance totalitarian separatist type etc we need democratic centralized self governance which actually will uh, stick to the um, uh, legitimate has an inclusive character of this governance. So far, we have a lot to do here because five billion, five hundred billion grivna, which the local uh, bodies received for decentralization, they were not provided with a national framework or a legislative framework or a mechanisms of control. And the last balance between the rights and the duties. Uh, it is uh, important, uh, well, we should not allow that uh, this kind of lack of balance violate the rights of the citizens, otherwise this would be kind of usurpation of the power uh, of some uh, local clans. And the last one, uh, safe decentralization, if we want to do that, we should think about introduction of index of self decentralization in order in, in other words to determine the criteria and the indicators will actually would reflect uh, the threats to the self governance for uh, uh, federalization and political identification of ukraine thank you vladimir vladimir honestly speaking it would be enough for two but we uh, questions but there, there is the third one this actually means that we do not have the primary and secondary they are the same importance is just the uh, we can talk first about this or one but anyway next speaker Igor uh, Kozlovsky you have seven minutes well I tend to listen to the first panel uh, now I uh, also listen to the previous speaker. I'm a historian, I'm not a political scientist. I'm um, uh, the, let's say, the um, expert in religion. And, uh, you, you know, the elections are kind of a mirror of the reality. We can just read the text, for example. We, there are some texts which we need in order to forecast or foresee the future. We are talking about the people who uh, selected this or another brands, parties, or people, and those people, despite the fact that the context, historical context, uh, changes or you know, political landscapes change, the people do not change that quick. And this inert uh, nature is associated with psychological features, of course, in the previous historical experience. We have a traumatized, traumatized uh, society, not because of the crisis we live through, the uh, warfare. Historically, we, we, this has been traumatized, and we have kind of a lack of confidence to the authorities, um, per se, they remember the totalitarian regime, etc., and this is still in the in back of their minds, you know. And this is a trauma uh, which provokes this or another, or forms this or another position. Number two, our society of late, and this has been uh, mentioned by everyone, is politicized. But I would say this is very low political, legal, and general humanitarian culture. Very often we can see uh, the uh, inability to reflect and to think, think about some of the problems which are vitally important for this specific person or for this specific community. Number three, we can observe the conflict of violence, uh, violence, violence, or, 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 or violence of uh, the people. On the one hand, they are 
expected some changes. On the other hand, they are afraid of the some changes. They need some kind of stable situation in which they can actually foresee the future to forecast their future. And this kind of conflict of bivalency uh, lead to, to the situation when the people, electors, they understand, they are afraid that they cannot change anything, but they understand those people, those people uh, which emerged and now we have regional parties, not only national parties. We know that the overwhelming majority of the people, they exist in the space of the consumers. They would like to consume and they consume starting from the the everyday, uh, let's say, needs and all the way to the consumption of information. And this consumption information actually influences their um, a choice in this or in another situation. Maybe we could talk about infantilism or paternalism. This has been already mentioned. So we have the situation where there are people which I describe, and this can change uh, quickly. And we'll have this situation in the future as well. We have to take this, this into consideration. Number two, they already mentioned, they mentioned the politicians. Our politicians are also the mirror of our society. Even young politicians who come to the fore in this way or another, they are the product of the development of our society, generally speaking, unfortunately, at this stage. And those who became active in this civil, uh, civil um, community, they came through some kind of trials. But this changes only part of their conscience. It doesn't do them, it doesn't make them experts, or does not actually um, uh, increase or improve their political or, let's say, <laughs> legal culture. We have to work on that. This is a certain challenge. Again, uh, politicians do not consider the society, consider society some kind of a market. The market, which includes those who consume, there are some commodities which they sell in this market, and they actually treat very often to their electorate, to their electors, as the um, society of consumers but not the people who could become their um, assistants or the participants in the, in the process which are very urgently, badly needed by our society. Somebody mentioned today the possible and real conflict between the center and regions. Yes, I agree that this conflict exists and this will continue to exist. This is a normal process. Why? Because we know that any uh, community, any person uh, develops in discomfort conditions. Uh, conflict is discomfort. And we can uh, how the, uh, when, when the community becomes, uh, uh, let's say, mature. Maturity comes when there is some kind of balance of diff different level. Legislative level, starting from that and all the way to all different trends which you already were talking about earlier. Next, uh, media which has played, still plays, and will play a certain role in our future. So what we have to pay attention to, that they, in most cases they actually serve the interests not of the people, uh, but the interests of certain oligarch groups or certain politicians or political parties. And this, and this means that this is something which actually disintegrates the um, society um, and not contributes to the integration or to the integrity. And uh, if you're talking about the political society of ours, this situation uh, is, I would say, mm, what they accept and they do not want to, and they are not going to change it. On the other hand, this is the challenge to the central authority, the center per se. They try to, um, to focus attention specifically on the value orientation. Uh, we, we, we actually prioritize very, uh, very often on the uh, vital needs of the people, and we do not promote the values which have to be implemented in the future. We often uh, talk about the 
previous time values, which are of course important, but sometimes they can separate the society, the, the kind of breaking uh, uh, down. Uh, we have to orientate ourselves to some values of the future, and those processes, they're absolutely important for us to have the process associated with the deoccupation of the conscience, which have been mentioned more than once. This is very important in order to understand that the conscience of the people, and the majority of the people, is occupied by different information, um, um, streams of news, some kind of the garbage, information garbage, which uh, they actually receive from the uh, internet or some other means of communication. There is no information culture of consumption. Eager, you have just one minute left. Okay, and uh, recently um, I heard the question, what happens uh, in the Slavyansk, Mariupol, what they were voting for? Maybe, uh, maybe they need to be uh, bombarded once again by some kind of the multi-barrel, um, let's say, um, uh, artillery installations. No, they just won't have, uh, I know, Graz, for example. And the ruination took part in, in Donetsk uh, sometimes, but there was a blind area which they could not actually, so to say, read. They, 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 they did not say that we are, uh, the blame shouldn't put at our door, but Ukraine is to blame. And again, if you're talking about the conscience of the people, I communicated in the basements with the, uh, those uh, who were uh, who were fighting, uh, and they found themselves in the basements. But this, even this, did not did not change their conscience. Even the experience was not enough uh, for for uh, for their mentality to change, and, and they didn't know how to reflect. They do not have an experience of reflection. They just take the information and then translate or transmit. Uh, they are not. Uh, they are not um, the changers. They are trans uh, transmitters of the information. We have to work with that. Thank you, Igor. Now we must have uh, Diana Barinova, expert of decentralization and the local development. She represents the National Institute of Strategic Studies. And what is interesting, she is from Kharkiv. And again, speaking of Kharkiv, we can say that the, uh, the elections are over. So what is next? Good afternoon, esteemed colleagues. It's uh, my pleasure to participate in this discussion. While I uh, listen to the first panel discussion, I actually put down 10, ten pages actually uh, covered with my notes. But you have only um, four minutes. Well, I would like to voice my absolute agreement with Igor. What we uh, have today, and I'm going to talk about the figures we have in Kharkov, the situation, and 100% uh, and, uh, we need to occupy the conscience of the people. I worked for many time in the field, so to say, during different uh, social discussion. And I, can, I, I could see that uh, there's a long lack of confidence in, among the people. The people still, they, they, they know how to, to enjoy their life. They, they are not educated. They, 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 nobody works with them. This is really a very important topic which the political parties and the central authorities have to think about that. We have to, to teach the people. We can talk about the Kharkiv region, maybe Donetsk and Lugansk regions. We have to change this kind of mentality of consciousness and those uh, conclusions have been further confirmed by the results of the um, uh, these, these uh, elections. He was talking about the very important things, uh, uh, safe decentralization, but our experience of, of the fa last five years, we have 24 amalgamated communities out of the uh, six, uh, 56. Those process were voluntary and we were very anxious how uh, those um, teams will uh, live through the elections. So out of the 24 amalgamated commun communities, 18 uh, chairmen or chairpersons will be uh, re-elected. No, no, maybe I'm mistaken. 
20 of, uh, out of um, uh, 20 will uh, 24 will change. Uh, new ones will come. Only four remain in their offices. So if we are talking about how we can uh, ensure a safe decentralization, when we were talking that people are very much afraid that we are going to have some kind of the abuse, different abuse, whatever, central authorities and profile ministries of the communities and the territories, they are working on two very important things regarding the control over the process of decentralization, this is my opinion. In uh, uh, to, 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 uh, tomorrow they are going to register the draft, uh, respective draft law, which will actually contain the uh, requirement, uh, the uh, supervision over the legality of the activity of the uh, activity of the local uh, com communities. Not control, but supervision. No, this is very important. And here I agree with the first panel discussion that we need to have a very good judicial system or all the other things which have to be in place. And other things, there is another very important factor which is uh, which the committee, uh, even the profound minister are working on today. They are working on the criteria regarding monitoring of the capability of the local uh, authorities, which will uh, make it possible uh, for the local people to see whether there is some kind of abuse, either ZERP, maybe times, whatever. And I believe those two tools or two instruments will be enough if they are fully implemented. They will be enough to, to see and influence the respective situation. I also would like to say a few words about the following. Based on the results of the local elections, the trends. The trends are the same as all over Ukraine. The political parties were not really prepared on their territories and territories of amalgamated communities to introduce their projects. They actually uh, 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 recruited the people spontaneously, you know, and there were some active and efficient candidate to be elected or just local people who did not associate themselves with any political party because they did not find some kind of the response in their minds and hearts uh, in, uh, which would generalize their uh, aspirations and so on. And in this way we, we lost a lot of very active people. Uh, and there was some kind of the electorate. Some people understood that uh, this specific person is a professional, but they did not agree with his, let's say, political orientation. So, you know, the, 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 that's why it was a very low uh, percentage of the people who voted. Well, uh, I actually, I expected 40 plus percent, and we had only 36. One minute. Speaking about the personnel. Uh, there is a big risk uh, if you are talking about the, 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 the sufficient personnel with the people who are experienced. In Kharkiv region, out of 20, uh, well, in 52, again, it has had some experience, uh, either the former village chairman, village council, or in the district council. So those are the experienced people. Speaking about the gender issue, there was only one chairperson of the amalgamated um, territorial community, only one uh, lady. Now we have seven. So everything is good from the point of view of uh, following and pursuing the gender policy. What else I would like to mention? Of course, the campaign was dirty. Uh, and somebody put flame, put fire to one of the vehicles. I don't know whether you saw that or not. Uh, speaking about the region council, 32 percent in the original party Kharkiv and the party for the life uh, less Yulis Vitlishin 12.8 and European Solidarity 8 percent this is preliminary figures based on the 98 percent of the protocols already processed so there are some issues which we have to work on uh, the party for, the, for life has a rather high percentage we, live, we have to live with that but I believe that the, this is the task for all of us to work with the local population in order to take care of the occupation of the consciences. We have to work with the people. Unfortunately, today we do not cope with this task. 
when I'm talking about all of us, I mean, I mean the society and the authority, etc. Okay, we ag I agree. Uh, thank you, Diana. Very interesting situation when, 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 uh, when uh, the elections, uh, uh, the winner becomes the regional party. Successful Kharkiv becomes the winner. We know about that. Yeah, we have one more very important uh, participant in online. Orisa Lutsevich, she, she is a, the, the scholar and the manager of the Ukrainian Forum and Program of Russia and Eurasia uh, at Chatham, Chatham uh, House. Orisa, you have three minutes maybe for Good afternoon. Uh, welcome from London. I can I can watch. Uh, well, I really miss Kiev and because of the pandemia, pandemia, it's where we cannot actually reach you or um, fly in. Some of the thank you for the invitation. What I'm going to, to talk, this is something which is in addition to our um, recent study, the, the, the protection of uh, Ukraine against Russia. I can actually share this um, information with you in the chat. This is kind of the layer of the um, study, what the, the impressions of the local, of the latest elections, local in elections, and some positive things. Number one, what I believe to be positive, uh, if we are talking about the uh, social cohesion unity, that the, 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 the quantity of the people who uh, who voted was approximately the same in all regions of Ukraine. Small difference. So that means that uh, people do, not, do care who is going to represent their interests. Number two, I believe that despite the, uh, the victory of the local parties, we still see that the national parties are present in the bodies of the local authority in both in the territorial communities, local governments, and they, of course this is servant of the people. But this is the failures compared to the previous elections of 2019, but it has been represented many communities. You also, the same can be said about the European solidarity. Unfortunately, this is my personal opinion in the eastern parts, in the, in the southern parts of Ukraine, the presence of the Party for Life is rather big. What Diana mentioned, that the, the people voted for the active uh, managers or leaders, despite uh, the, the the atmosphere in the mass media, this is certain <coughs> decision which is important for democracy. Maybe we won't agree with uh, everything mentioned by Mr. Lulubati that this is a kind of crisis of um, the, 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 the democracy, whatever. But I also would like to say that small parties like the power of the people are still in the political space of Ukraine. It is difficult for them to exist. For example, in Mariupol, you can see that part of the People Party continue their political development. A few words about the risks we, uh, we, we, we can see, and we have to pay attention to that in the future. Why this kind of social cohesion is so important for Ukraine? We should not forget that this aggressive um, attempt of uh, Russia, which is aimed at the, uh, let's say, at the breakage of the disunity, let's say, of uh, different regions of Ukraine and to, 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 to inflate, or let's say, to kindle the lack of confidence we, we can see here um, of the people to the different authorities. So the, those local elites actually use those, uh, whether they use this uh, um, opportunity to increase their power or they are going to do something in the national agenda reforms and uh, work together with the political force of the President Zelensky. Uh, we do not know whether we're going to have the conflict or not, but it depends very much how the coalitions are going to be formed here and there. We are talking about different forms of, of polarization, uh, different regions of Ukraine. What actually the lines which separate uh, different regions, like in Europe, uh, cities and villages, educated and uh, non-educated uh, communities. And again, in Europe, they have different groups which have different ideological mentality and points of view. But in Ukraine, we have some additional things. 
added to that uh, in this kind of post-Soviet incomplete reforms. We are talking about the people who visualize uh, the, uh, the role of the state in different way. The issue of Donbass, whatever uh, you can say, but in the, this kind of questions of president, and the people do not have the well-formed uh, consensus what we should do with Donbass, or how should find a way out of the military conflict, or how the land reform is going to be further developed again, how we are going to develop our relations with Russia in the future. We can see the increase of popularity of the Party for Life, Many people actually just swallowed very uh, sweet pill uh, proposed to them when they tried to, 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 let's say, to push through even some kind of local agenda. And again, how the Ukrainian identity is going to further the world, whether it's going to be exclusive, whether it's going to be a national patriotic or, or not. Unfortunately, this issue hasn't been resolved yet in Ukraine. Maybe this will take several decades, I believe. In conclusion, a few more words. What, in our opinion, should to do? We have some of recommendations contained in our report. Just three things. Number one, it seems to me that this conf possible conflict between central regions can be, uh, let's say, uh, mediate, uh, let's say, uh, softened, let's say, by um, whether we can uh, we can reach some kind of the, uh, let's say, some kind of the real sustainable development, or maybe this was kind of propaganda instrument tools is that we can use it on our own, why we should need the Kyiv, generally speaking, their support. And we have to think about the national program development where the different communities could see their role, where they could actually join their efforts and they may be job budgets with the central budget. Also, I believe that very important is the role of the NGOs and the local activists, many of those were in the list of the um, candidates. Why uh, important is development of such high quality local communities? Because the, uh, the studies demonstrate, for example, in the one in Italy, but in those where we have the activity of the local community, the quality of the um, uh, governance uh, was rather high. So there is a direct connection, uh, link be between the activity of the local persons or local people and uh, how they, their localities were developed. They have to delegate, delegate their confidence, which can be formed with their participation uh, given the uh, transparent rules and regulations etc and and the uh, big role bel belongs to uh to, to different players um zero etc and, and uh, you have just one minute I, i'm finishing i believe that this issue how uh, to develop in ukraine the confidence or trust which has been destroyed by the totalitarian system and the corruptive uh, environment available in Ukraine today. It seems to me that the role of the uh, civil, uh, civil activist uh, Pavlenka Alexander Martininka allow me to ask him one question. Igor, you were talking about our society as a market and the po 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 politics in this market. So the demand forms uh, the supply, or supply uh, forms the demand. You know, uh, any any society must must form where people consume something at least. If uh, if we just uh, follow the, uh, the, 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 the the demands of the people, that means that we <coughs> do not develop. We just kind of uh, stay in uh, the same place. And again, if you're talking about the active part of society, we have to use that in order to form this kind of value-based orientation. This is really a problem. When all those events started, we, we may not like we know about that. The problem was that it was absolute, um, uh, let's say, a lack of education. Education, uh, I'll say, uh, they did not uh, did not perceive anything Ukrainian. 
they did not form their uh, mentality and understand on Ukraine as a state. Thank you. Given the, 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 the uh, well, the conditions, who can be involved in the formation of this demand? Who has to come up with the proposal, with the supplies, so to say? Igor? Any formation uh, can, can come from different sources. If there is a state policy, it must embrace all the spheres, starting from education. So this is, let's say, education and, and uh, clearly media space and uh, the work of the active part of the civic community who put the question before the um, authorities because the civic community is a part of our general community which actually forms those ideas and delegates to the um, uh, uh, bodies of uh, power uh, and controls them so it must be some controlling part on the part of the civic communities, then the authorities will respond to that. Thank you. Any questions to Igor Kozlovsky? No. Okay. Uh, according to our agenda, the floor is given to Irina Pavlenka, expert of the National Institute of Strategic uh, Studies and the head of the Department of Development of Political System. You have the floor. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity given to me. First of all, I would like to remind you that such proportional system which was used during the, the these elections and coming down, or well, let's say allowing to participate of the, uh, let's say, communities uh, with at least 10,000 people strong, I mean communities, this was um, based around the uh, stronger political parties and trying to oust away the weaker parties from the political projects. In other words, in the interest of the parliamentary parties. Uh, there's some kind of irony in what happened here. But nevertheless, uh, I cannot say that this party system does not work in this direction. For us to understand where we are, it's worthwhile. Well, I understand that uh, today we have just preliminary results, very approximate results of the voting. But even proceeding for what we have, it would be very useful to compare the results of this ele these elections with the previous elections, local elections. Back in 2015, uh, uh, as a result of the activity of the Party of Regions, uh, so they, 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 the reports were in such a ruined that situation was really ruined, which was niche was um, uh, filled with local and smaller parties was kind of a uh, heyday of uh, the smaller parties. And uh, actually, we, we, we had about 80 political parties during the preliminary elections of 2018, when some leaders have been already in the stage on the scene, um, the, in the, almost 55% of the local councils were uh, were taken by the party regions. You, you remember uh, there was a kind of a question who, uh, who uh, actually, who became the winner? The um, Yulia Timoshenko bloc or the uh, Poroshenko bloc? BBP or BUT um, in the local elections. So what we have today, we can see that the uh, servant of the people uh, approximately 17 percent in their votes in the local and uh, percent in the region. Other parliamentary uh, parties have approximately the same representative level, which differs from the previous elections. And then BBP Solidarity, they had a bit less than 19 percent. So there is some kind of correlation a certain correlation here. Parliamentary parties will have more than 50% of the mandates in the local um, council of different councils of different levels. So the the point is, or well, the matter is, not in the proportionality of the represented representation of the general national uh, top 
uh, political parties. The changes took place in the second part, on second, um, let's say, category of political parties, which are going to be represented in the local councils. They ousted or uh, squeezed out <coughs> the very, very small parties. They concentrated on the tangible, let's say, or, uh, players. And their representation, if you're talking about Ukraine, their um, role is smaller and smaller. And the exception is the block of Kern's block in Kharkov. But speaking about Ukraine, regional parties will have less, will be less represented in the local councils. What is interesting, we have non parliamentary political parties which nevertheless cannot be considered regional because they are kind of multi regional. They are trans uh, district trans regional. They are represented in many districts and many regions. Among those are very interesting projects, and here I agree with the previous speakers that uh, such uh, party as a proposition, uh, this movement can develop into a parliamentary parliamentary party in the future. We'll see whether this story of the formation or creation of a new lift of the formation of political elite of the national caliber, I would say. Um, we, we are uh, departing from the kind of schematic issue from media projects to some other bracket. Uh, let's see if you're talking about the uh, the tangible, um, uh, tangible category, and I have some political optimism about that. Uh, another um, very important thing, it pretty much depends what kind of coalitions are going to be created in, in the local levels. Would be I would be surprised, uh, even at the level of Kiev, and this is an old their problem, and uh, they have very weak regional representation. Even such parties, uh, European Solidarity in Kyiv, at the level of um, uh, offering their candidates, they have had a lot of non-partisan members in their um, list. So maybe there will be some kind of different co coalitions, which will come into conflict with the general, let's say, political orientation of this one party. And then we can uh, believe whether Kyiv will preserve the levers of, uh, let's say, of control, uh, or let's say, influence of, uh, of other regions or not. So we can see that many of those will be in opposition to Kyiv, and this is not a problem even. Even this is not a problem, I agree with Lopatsi here, Mr. Lopatsi. The problem is first that the politics is not competition about conf conflict nature and this kind of conflict is not always constructive uh, due to that uh, we as a country we face the following challenges number one I was already mentioned what we should do with the reform of decentralization uh, may I remind you that we stopped at the uh, last constitutional stage of that reform, which provides for, in particular, a delegation of the right to the council to form the executive bodies of power. So the question will arise whether we should introduce that, should we agree, should we make this step or not. This is a very debatable issue under the available conditions. We'll see, by the way, how um, the events will develop further on in the relations between the central regions. We should not forget about the war. We should not forget the Department for Life has a very accentuated um, regional representation in the very strong positions uh, in some of the regions. This carries certain risks in, its, in itself. But on the other hand, such reg you know, strong regional elites uh, which are going to be represented in the local um, the councils by the, such parties as proposition, they will place an emphasis on the following, to continue decentralization and to complete decentralization. They're going to exert the pressure from below on Kyiv, and Kyiv has kind of gravitation to delegate their authority to the local authorities and in this way to diminish their responsibility. So there are some risks and we have to think how to continue this this reform and how we have to balance this reform 
off. In particular, I would like to pay your to your attention, uh, conventional speaking, let's call them prefects. What would be their responsibilities? Whether we are talking about supervisory functions, or they will have uh, some um, opportunity to exert some kind of um, more operational influence on the decisions taken by the regional authorities of the local from the local level and what kind of division of the authorities between the executive uh, executive what is this level and the central level so those issues we have to balance those levers to, to create the balance in the normative regulatory uh, uh, level. Another reform we would like to talk about, a reform of development of democracy per se in Ukraine. And uh, you have just one uh, minute. Yeah. Well, and next year we expect uh, that uh, we will have draft laws in the Verkhovna Rada about the local referendums. The um, the presence or availability of the um, uh, lack of the laws, uh, respective laws, did not prevent to have such referendums. Again, we are talking about the changes in the law enforcement agencies, in the supervisory institutions, etc. But we should not even forget about this risk as as well. And the legislation of the local referendums must have a very clear list of uh, the uh, questions which can be uh, included in the, as the main uh, issues of the local re uh, referendums. In the region, uh, you know, the problem doesn't lie in the regional, non-regional parties. In Europe, uh, let's say there are a lot of countries uh, which allow us the existence of two different parties on the uh, national level levels. They're guided, uh, uh, apart from the very influential uh, political parties. And, but this is another question why we do not have such parties. Maybe we should think uh, that we should uh, adopt a new party law, which would stimulate the parties uh, for them to develop as democratic institutions, irrespective of their owners or oligarchs. Of course, we need a very, very, very well uh, balanced policy of budgeting and uh, national development. Of course, the problem lies in the fact that all those trends uh, demonstrated by uh, the latest uh, local uh, elections they influence the, let's say the, let's say the the, the, uh, the management problem, which is really becomes more serious today. Uh, thank you. Irina, uh, maybe I will have, uh, have maybe some questions, but it depends really how much time will take Alexander Martinenko, General Director of Interfax Ukraine. I'll try to uh, fit into moment limit, time limits. Number one, any interesting idea, any reform in Ukraine uh, which is adopting this world, any kind of template in this world. In Ukraine, works in an uh, absolutely different way, in the wrong way, or just doesn't work at all. Or even which is uh, worse, uh, will give absolutely uh, different results uh, as compared to those which we expected to have, including decentralization. Uh, we can see that in the principle of independence of judges, uh, including in the Constitution Court. There was a wonderful uh, European idea, but in the Ukrainian realities, it requires a new meaning. And uh, wait, of course, this is the question toward the um, decentralization, which uh, takes place all world over including Ukraine under our conditions, it, it's, it turns into the process of creating, if not the feuds, but many, many different centers of influence. We are the country in transition. We are always on the go, on the move. 
uh, and not because we do something wrong today. We, I, I believe that we can't do anything else, you know, but we have to be prepared to do that, uh, the, that for key decades we, are, we will we'll be trying to find the proper ways how to uh, to organize this uh, the, um, uh, the the uh, the uh, the authority of the people. Uh, and again, I also would like to to talk now uh, what uh, we were talking about that we do not have the national parties. This is true, and this was clearly demonstrated by the this, these elections. They are all of them are regional rather. And the party which actually claimed to be a national one, I'm talking about the Servant to the People Party, but they tell to me that they cannot actually um, play that role so far, or generally, I don't know yet. Uh, and if, if they, maybe they will fulfill this mission, but today we still have the regions represent uh, which uh, rep uh, rep represented by the um, party of um, for life, etc. But uh, uh, with the exception of one region, I'm talking about the Vinich uh, region, we, we have just Mona, Mona Pari uh, model of uh, management, um, uh, regional uh, council, city council, etc. That is why uh, we were talking about the role of mass media. And of course, uh, media is also has something to do with that because all those party holdings, three channel holdings, this is kind of analog of the friend, um, as a stream because each of them inform their streams in uh, Facebook and they try to do that in on TV. Everybody um, makes use of that and it's, it's not something we should be surprised at. But again, the lack of the national parties, I, I think what we have to do uh, answer this question, of course, we have to create the national party. No law can do that. No adoption of no law can do that. And I mentioned before, the, law, uh, the laws do not work here like they work in the, uh, in the rest of the world. It's very important for our leaders, leaders of the social thought, must be persuaded that this is really absolutely necessary for survival of our country. Speaking about the mayors, of course, we are going to work under the conditions of the local parties, by the way, they they, they actually uh, uh, collected a lot of voters, votes uh, in different localities of Ukraine. Some of them will become uh, members of the uh, regional councils. So they maybe will become the backbones sometimes since some of those. I um, may remind you that the operation imperative mandate will uh, appear next year. And uh, before that, I don't know how to call those coalitions. I would say they will, will be coalitions for the division of the property irrespective of the um, part, party uh, banner, party for life, European, European solidarity, the voice, maybe not voice, I hope. Within uh, one year, all those parties will divide uh, all the remaining property, which is not too much. And uh, in, so that uh, they, they actually well, they will try to do everything before the imperative mandate is introduced so that they, they have enough property for five years to come. And I believe nobody will uh, actually prevent them from doing that. Uh, well, in my opinion, if you're talking about the, the, the mayor, uh, party, party of the mayors, uh, it's not a threat to Ukraine. Uh, how should I put it? If there will be next uh, future elections of the Kharkiv mayor, Maybe theoretically, technically speaking, she could uh, really participate in those new elections, and she has good chances. Dear colleagues, do you have anything to respond to somebody, other speakers' thoughts? For example, Irina Pavlenka, uh, she mentioned Vladimir Lupatsi. She said she did disagrees with the term um, uh, the, the regarding decentralization. And, uh, maybe somebody else would like to say, or maybe Vladimir Pass will further develop uh, his thesis about successful decentralization. Uh, 
uh, excuse me, self decentralization. Well, actually, I mentioned a lot about self decentralization. What I can add, indeed, there are a lot of risks, but on the other hand, what was mentioned by co my colleagues, decentralization also carries the potential which will balance off the claims of the regional uh, uh, hands, let's say, minds, in order to further develop the conflict between region and center. We heard today, Diana Barino mentioned that, that in Lviv, there were 20, uh, city, uh, 20 districts in this region, now only seven. So in the persons of the mayors and the chairman of the uh, amalgamated territorial communities, we have very powerful players. Maybe politically they're not enough structured. Maybe they're just part of the new regional parties which do not have the parliamentary representation. They're not representing the parliament or the national parties which are represented in the par parliament. This is kind of the transitional option, but it depends pretty much on the central authorities whether they are going to use this in order to further uh, increase the national uh, basis for positive transformations, or this will turn into um, the uh, parliamentary opposition, will, which will be another headache for the existing uh, leadership. I believe that despite the fact that uh, some time has been lost, as my colleague said, if the president uh, demonstrates the will toward the establishment of strategic communications, because the whole system was working the vertical, along the vertical axis. There is the government, the president, and the governors, and then small Ukrainians, as we remember. Now there is another challenge for this uh, management system and the ability of the central authorities to work with all the three levels, with the regional level, to communicate uh, with the regional councils and the governors, or the uh, heads of the, um, uh, let's say, the amalgamated um, uh, territorial communities, ATCs, or to work um, directly with the ATC um, uh, uh, chairman. And there are some new associations of ATCs, the, uh, the, the Foundation of Development of ATCs, and all, we are going to have alliances based on the, some kind of the, um, uh, let's say, increased regions. So the situation is open. The more so that theoretically there could be the case when we do not have new uh, new districts because there are a lot of um, uh, proposals submitted to the court by uh, some of the, uh, the MPs. So, technically speaking, no, theoretically speaking, we can say that this decision would be cancelled of the court, I mean. Uh, maybe not. Uh, dear esteemed colleagues, the first question we were discussing, what kind of key lessons we can derive from this year's uh, election races for the future, we heard something, you know, just just to, uh, to, 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 to imprint, imprint this in our minds, so each of you will have one or two minutes, one minute. Just please mention the key step which you, you believe to be the most important. We start with uh, Risa uh, Lutsevich, please. Thank you, Andre. It seems to me that the key um, lesson to be derived is the following, that the communication with the electorate, with the, um, the constituencies, is, is, is very important under the, under the difficult conditions when the information in the field has been captured by different clans, groups, um, and the proponents of the Russian misinformation, we could see that some of the parties who directly try to, to establish direct communication, who with their activities could propagate, let's say, some ideas of development, they, uh, they obtained very good results. It seems to me, I would like, you know, to have uh, this competition of the ideas which uh, starts to appear here regarding the development of the uh, local communities uh, will gradually um, pass to the national level to have m less co conflicts in the, the opinion but have more uh, unity in our opinion. Thank you, Irina Pavlenko. Uh, 
In my opinion, uh, this is a traditional conclusion. Uh, you can talk about anything that happens in Ukraine. When, when we are talking about the reforms and the transformations, we cannot change anything just for, for ourselves. For uh, the, 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 the main criteria must be efficiency. When we, uh, they started to introduce this election system, of course they expected something different, and the result was absolutely different. You know, we cannot introduce this uh, everywhere in the proportional system in the, city, in the country where we do not have normal parties, which would be responsible, or which would correspond to, this, to the meaning of this word. Semantic meaning. On the other hand, I would like to emphasize that while the situation is not is rather ambiguous, and but not as a result of the elections, but as a result of a whole a number of different a set of different reasons, we cannot identify the success of the uh, servant of the people with the unity of the country, in general speaking, um, because the the country is not determined by the the, the uh, party at the uh, at the power it could be even if it's dominated if it were dominated maybe it's, it would be much easier but we have to talk about the management process management general interactions we are talking about the uh, the executive uh, um, uh, central executive authorities and local authorities. We are talking about the central um, and, uh, projects to develop the territories and, and development of the territories between the regions, uh, interregional, so to say, development. And those things could actually uh, glue the country fastly. Uh, I heard today the uh, Olga Wazowska, who was absolutely right to say that the country. Uh, if you're talking about how to preserve this country from disintegration, this can be done by the uh, powerful law enforcement agencies, uh, judicial power, and this, let's say, uh, security service. I, I was listening to that and thought, where they are? They have to do that, but where they are? Uh, maybe I'm wrong, wrong to put it. Are there any uh, any uh, any grounds for us to say that we can create those? Why such optimism? Unfortunately, we do not have those grounds. We we exist in the we live in the country in which we live, but not in which we would like to live in. Uh, if we want to to lead the people to some kind of distant and bright future, but we should not forget that where we are today, and this is a, a very long way to to cover, but this is the the way, the road, and we have uh, to do something about that. And of course, decentralization is very important. We should not, uh, we should not uh, lose it, even in the in the form it, we have it now. If we lose it, we won't have anything to uh, to rebuild anything. Uh, anything uh, because some of some of the people will go to the Crimea and work a happy life there, maybe, but the majority of people will live, stay here. So, it seems to me we should uh, less experiment, but work more. Thank you, Diana Bari. Now, your minute. Main lesson, my, my uh, sentiments, right? It seems to me that Ukrainian society is living through very very difficult uh, situation and very difficult uh, road but we are going to negotiate that uh, maybe this will require a long time we we have to uh, spread the the, the, the the let's say the public activities and, and uh, to do more with the reforms and again the if you're talking about the local uh, governments, bodies, we actually managed to take care of some volunteer projects. Uh, to in ten minutes from now, we are going to have a Zoom conference with the people dif representing different political forces. But the question is the same: how we should organize the efficient work with the uh, bodies of the local uh, governments? And I, it, it makes me happy. It gives me. 
um, uh, inspiration and actually I uh, and, uh, instills the hope in me that we can do something. We have to do something in the real sector and try to slowly, gradually to glue the country, you know, to soothe the country back and to try to, to, uh, to, to involve maximum possible resources in order to allow our local communities to further develop. Uh, thank you, Diana. Volodymyr Lupatsi. Uh, uh, me as a representative uh, of the National Dialogue for Peace and uh, Sef uh, 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 Reintegration as present this national platform, I hope that I hope for some in inclusive dialogue between the government and the political leadership as all the progressive and active initiative, productive, fruitful initiatives, which we can find at all the levels. In fact, we are talking about the change of the model of management and political culture. The, uh, the, the guarantee is the potential of, uh, of the organization per se, which can be launched through the process of decentralization. And the key uh, thing here is actually to more actively react to destructive forces. All the rest, actually, we can do something about that. So the the key moment is try not to allow the uh, the uh, external forces to take to make use of the crisis of the growth, so to say, of ours. Thank you, Vladimir. Different people, different organization uh, represent, or maybe do not represent organizations, but they speak on, on their own. This is actually the right and the uh, duty to do that. But some uh, thoughts and ideas coincide. Uh, efficiency, uh, non-efficiency, there are new initiatives in, in the uh, self uh, governance. We can see and here the confirmation of that because in the 10 minutes there will be some special conference. I would like to thank everyone. Please follow the steps of the national platform dialogue about peace and safe reintegration. I almost said this in the, 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 the decentralization. It means that during such a discussion we actually introduce new terms in our uh, discussion. Thank you very much and uh, good luck to everyone. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye, all the best.